A very warm welcome wherever you are. This is Moya Kihumba presenting on behalf of Institute of Finance Education Now. As always, I hope you are doing absolutely fantastic. To promote the beautiful work my team and I are doing, please consider subscribing if, to the channel if you've not already done so. Comment, like, and share this video. In today's video, we, we turn our attention to cost volume profit analysis. In a decision-making process, there's lots of selection from different possible causes of action. Before managers make their choices, they need to compare the likely effect of the options they are considering. In this video, we look at one technique that allows them to consider the consequences of a particular course of action, and it will provide answers such as how many units do we need to sell in order to break even. Um, what sales volume is required in order to meet additional fixed charges, a license from other activities, for instance, advertising campaign and so forth. And all these questions and many others can be answered using cost volume profit analysis. Cost volume profit analysis examines the relationship between change in activity, that is output and changes in total revenue, costs and net profits. It allows us to predict what will happen to financial results if specified level of activity or volumes fluctuates. This information is vital to management since one of the most important variables influencing total sales revenue, total cost and profit is output or volume. Knowledge of this relationship enables management to identify critical output levels such as such a twist, uh, we neither have a profit nor a loss, and this occurs when you have a break-even point. Obviously, this CVP analysis is based on certain assumptions, uh, and it uses marginal costing approach, but they are applied to future costs. One of the assumptions is that we assume that costs are either fixed or variable, and the variable cost per unit is the same at all levels of activity. Of course, total variable cost will change as output level changes, will increase as output level increases, and total fixed cost will remain constant in each period. We also assume that profit is measured as contribution, and contribution is computed as sales minus variable cost. Um, and now we are saying profit is, contrib contrib uh, is contribution minus the fixed costs. Other assumptions that we make it is that fixed cost remains unchanged at all levels of output. Uh, and therefore, for the firm to maximize profit, it must maximize total contribution. We assume that contribution per unit is constant. We also assume that the selling price for each of the product remains constant. Uh, and therefore, co contribution to the sales ratio will remain constant at all levels of sales. When marginal costing is used to report profits, changes in level of goods inventory is important. But with CVP analysis, the inventory levels are irrelevant because we assume that they do not change. Now, we, we use CVP analysis to compute the break-even points to sales. And break-even point to sales, as we said, is the volume of sales required in order to break even and make neither a profit nor a loss. In other words, we are saying the break-even point is that point when profit is equal to zero. Why would management want to know about the break-even point? Number one, they would want to know the profit profitability they would have to make in order to avoid a loss, or they would need to identify the minimum volume of sales that must be achieved in order to avoid a loss, or they need to assess the amount of risk in the budget by comparing the budgeted volumes of sales with the break-even volume. We'll look at each one of those in terms. How do we compute the break-even point? The, the break-even point in units, because you shall see you can also con uh, compute it in sales value, is computed as fixed cost divided by contribution per unit. Contribution per unit is the selling price per unit minus variable cost per unit. Let's take an example. Consider the total fixed cost of a farm is half a million dollars and the variable cost per unit is 300 and the sales price per unit 
is 500. What would be the break-even point in, in units? That would be the fixed cost, half a million, divided by contribution per unit, which is 200. Notice how we've com computed contribution per unit. And therefore, the break-even point in units is 250,000 shillings. Dollars, uh, I mean units. And we may want to confirm that. We take our sales, and our sales will obviously be units sold. Um, in our case, 2,500 times selling price. The, the, the selling price we've been told is a 500. That will give us $1.25 million. Then we less variable cost. Variable cost is variable cost per unit, which we've been told is 300 times the number of units sold, 2,500. When you multiply that, those two, they'll give us 750,000. And therefore, contribution, which is sales minus um, variable cost, would be 500. $500,000. You may also compute contribution as the number of units sold, 2,500, times the selling price, 500. Eh? Sorry, times the contribution per unit, 200, and we'll arrive at the same figure. Then when we raise our fixed cost of half a million dollars, we add up with a profit which is equal to zero. We may also want to compute break-even points in shillings or in dollars or in value, currency value. And there are two ways of doing this. The first way is to get the fixed costs divided by contribution per unit and we multiply that by selling price per unit. In other words, we take break-even point in unit and we multiply that by selling price per unit. Uh, alternatively, we could compute it as fixed cost divided by contribution margin. But what is contribution margin? Contribution margin can also be referred to as contribution to sales ratio, and it's given as contribution of a selling price per unit. You may want to express it as a percentage, or you may want to leave it as a decimal point. Eh? In our case, contribution is 200, selling price is 500. So that in decimal point is 0 0.4, in percentage is 40%. Therefore, our break-even point in value will be half a million divided by contribution to margin contribution to sales ratio 0 0.4 and that will give us 1.25 million um, uh, dollars. Let, let's look at an illustration. A company makes a single product that has a variable cost of uh, 16 pounds, 16 dollars sorry, at a selling price of 20 dollars per unit. Budgeted fixed cost are 600,000. What, what volume of sale is required to break even? We can use either of the methods, but you could use the second one. Fixed cost divided by contribution margin. Contribution margin is 20%, and therefore break even point in sales is 600,000 divided by 0 0.2, which should be $3 million. Please try and confirm that. C can we get it? in sales volume. Can we get it in units? Yes, we can. We, we, we simply get the selling price. I mean, the, the break-even point in value, we divide that by selling price per unit. Eh? Uh, and um, the number of units to break-even will be 3 million divided by selling price per unit 20, which should give us 150,000 units. There's an extra zero missing there. Please add. Then we could look at target profits. The management might want to know what the volume of sales must be achieved in order to attain a target profit. To achieve a profit of any size, first, we must obtain sufficient contribution to cover fixed costs. That is, first, we must have to break even. If contribution is not sufficient to cover fixed costs, then we shall end up with losses. However, once we have sufficient contribution being achieved, any excess contribution would represent a profit. Therefore, to determine total contribution to obtain a target profit, we simply add target profit to the fixed cost and divide by the contribution per unit so that unit sold to attain a, uh, a certain target profit would be given as fixed cost plus target profit divided by contribution per unit. Now let's look at an illustration. A company makes and sells a product that has a variable cost of 5 per five dollars per unit and sales at nine dollars per unit budgeted fixed cost are six hundred thousand dollars 
for the year and the company wishes to make a, a profit of at least 100,000. How many units must be sold in order to uh, to achieve the minimum um, profit, target, uh, pro profit target? You could pause the video for a moment and then you try and compute that. Eh? Once that is done, you'll find that the unit sold in order to achieve a target profit has been given us so much. Eh? Of course, four is the contribution. We take our fixed cost, 600,000. We add 100,000, the target profit, and we end up with 175,000 units. We could prove that, and that is proved in the opposite side, 175K times 5 and so forth. Please take time for that. Then let's turn our attention to margin of safety. Margin of safety is the difference between the budgeted sales, either in units or in value, and the break-even amount of sales, and it could be either in units or in value. It is usually expressed as a percentage of budgeted sales. However, it, it could also be measured as a, a quantity of units, that is the difference between budgeted sales volume in units and the budgeted sales volume, or an amount of sales volume, that is the, 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 the difference between the budgeted sales revenue and the total sales revenue required to break even. We, we refer to it as um, we, we refer to it as margin of safety because it is the maximum amount by which sales can be lower than budgeted sales without incurring a loss for the period. Uh, and therefore a higher margin of safety would indicate a lower risk of making a loss. Let's take an illustration. A company sells, a company budgets to sell 25,000 units of its product. This has a selling price of $16 um, uh, and a variable cost of $4. Fixed costs are expected, for the period are expected to be 240,000. You are required to compute the margin of sales in units and in percentage. Remember we said, Margin of safety is budgeted sales in units minus break-even sales in units. Eh? And, and therefore, it means you need to compute the budgeted, you need to compute the, 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 the break-even sales. And maybe, you, again, you could pause the video uh, and compute. And when you do that, you'll find that our break-even point in units is, uh, is 20,000 units. The margin of safety is the difference between the two um, budgeted sales, 25,000, minus break-even sales, 20,000, which will, will give us a margin of sales of 5,000 units. We multiply that 5,000 units by 16 pounds in order to get the margin of safety in, in value. When we express it as a percentage, it is the budgeted sales minus break-even sales, everything divided by the break-even sales. And when you do that, our margin of safety is 20%. Why is the CVP analysis useful? Number one, it assesses the impact of price changes. Two, it assesses the changes in costs. It is a useful planning tool and we can use it in any part of a business plan. However, it has some limitations. The assumptions that we make, it assumes that prices do not change. But you of course know, price could change. Eh? The number of competitors can also change um, uh, and all that. That's the end. Thank you everyone. Have an absolutely fantastic day and I shall see you next time. Bye bye.